So I've inadvertently become like a CDC spokesperson within the realm of my family and friends. And uh, my Roman Empire is how uh, not receiving the MMR vaccine as a child because my parents rightfully mistrusted the medical industrial complex led to me getting measles in my freshman year and then mumps in my mm, I think it was the end of my sophomore year in college and that shifted the trajectory of my life and I know that a ton of parents right now with the measles outbreak in Texas New Mexico and all those other places here in the U.S. are just they just want to protect their babies they just want to do the right thing it's not a character failing to be you know skeptical of the public consensus in a hyper real world no judgment whatsoever i'm just going to tell you what getting measles was like for me and the uh, ramifications that it had on my life so that way you can make an informed choice for you and your family hopefully and maybe you remember this down the road but when I was uh, 18, my or sorry, 19, I went to school late. My freshman year, uh, spring finals exam, I started getting a rash all over my body. And I thought it was stress or the fact that um, our dorm had just had mold. But I didn't think anything of it until maybe a couple days later, I started to feel the sickest that I'd ever felt. Uh, I basically slept for three weeks. Um, it was misery. Um, my parents were really worried about me. Uh, nobody that I went to as doctors, like, even thought to test me for measles, which was crazy. I mean, I only went to, like, the public university's, um, people, but, yeah, nobody even thought to check it because, you know, 90 plus percent of people were vaccinated in 2015 against M uh, MMR, and, uh, when I went back to school after that, I just, I didn't feel right. I didn't feel right for a while, but I, it took me some time. I took the summer classes or something. I forget what I was doing that summer, but I just remember feeling really weak, like weaker than I had felt in a, in a long time, which that in and of itself, it's like, okay, you were sick. You didn't feel good for a while. You got over it. But some stuff started happening in my life and I didn't find out until many years later that these things happen after getting measles. Uh, those things were, let me see if I can find the study. Essentially there is something that happens to um, like young people who pass a certain age, like you know, babies who get it have certain sets of symptoms. But one thing that we can tell from older people who've gotten uh, the measles like age seven and above, I believe, is that your uh, immune system develops amnesia is what they call it. So essentially every antibody that my body had programmed against different bacteria and viruses, it forgot them. And for the next mm, six or seven years, I was basically sick every two months, every three months, like quite sick. Uh, I got scarlet fever, I got C. diff, I got um, strep throat was like, I would get strep throat three or four times a year, I eventually had to get my tonsils out. Um, but having the um, amnesia, they say is uh, essentially the equivalent of the immunodeficiency of an HIV person. So I basically spent the next seven years of my life uh, living with the immune system of someone who has HIV. And uh, the effect on my life as somebody who was young, who was trying to start their life, it was devastating. Um, like a lot of people, my parents co-signed my student loans and uh, I had medical debt, people calling me about medical debt, I had people calling me about my student loans. And my biggest fear at that time was that my parents who had been wrecked by uh, the recession and were about to go into this other recession. Uh, so maybe it's like top of mind more so these days for me, but that they would be saddled with my responsibilities. And the guilt of that is like a young girl who just really loved her family was devastating. And uh, in part, I take full responsibility for my life and my choices, but that was a huge part of how I reasoned that, oh, knock. Sorry, that was my date and it was dinner time. Anyway, point being that obviously my life is my life 
but um, medical and student debt was a huge part of why I started to um, do um, it was a job that worked for a sick, per- sick person. I could work whenever I felt good and then I could crash when I was sick and I wouldn't lose my job because um, being sick, like I was sick, um, every other month was really starting to impact uh, my employment and my ability to continue my career. And it's really funny because obviously, you know, I'm not minimizing um, the importance of autism. My little sister has autism. Um, I have ADHD, which is its own other version of neurodivergence. Um, When people say that they're concerned about the side effects of vaccines, I think that a lot of people get very angry because this is a, a topic that's really emotionally fraught and um, we live in an imperfect system and there are profit and um, shareholder concerns that oftentimes in the medical industrial complex supersede the importance of well-being and we see that over and over again. Um, To denigrate that or to belittle someone because they're hesitant about intervening in their child's um, medical choices, you know, when your children are so small and these are our long-term choices, it's, it's really hard, but whether or not the U S vaccine schedule versus the European vaccine schedule versus the Japanese vaccine schedule, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to tell you anything about that. What I am here to tell you about is that there's a reason that 50 years ago, 60 years ago, when the polio vaccine was first coming out, that everybody lined up and got their kids vaccinated. Um, And it's because these diseases are sinister. It's, we just got a reminder of what a global pandemic looks like and wherever you stand on that. And I think some of my friends are gonna be like, you sound like a conspiracy theorist. Listen, listen, the, the whole world has gone through a series of things over the last several years that would shake the faith of anyone in institutions. But if I can tell you a couple of things, because I care so much about the MMR vaccine that I educated myself on this after I learned about immunological amnesia as a side effect of measles. And uh, here's a couple things I can tell you. Number one, the MMR vaccine is among the safest of the vaccines. Um, It is one of my favorite, simple, straightforward studies, and I wish that they did this for every vaccine so we could just settle this and put this to bed one way or the other, is in Europe, I want to say it was Denmark or Holland, I can't remember, or maybe one of the Scandinavian company, countries, I'll put it in the comments when I find it. Anyway, they did a study, it was a simple survey of more than 2 million children in this country, and they said, have you been vaccinated or have you not been vaccinated? And they had enough kids, I think it was over half a million, that they had a proper control group for this vaccine, the MMR vaccine. And they just followed these kids for years. And what they found was that the rates of autism in the control group, the non-vaccinated versus the vaccinated group was exactly the same. And in fact, what they did find was that in the unvaccinated children, that there was a higher risk of these sort of symptomatic autoimmune disorders and things like that alongside it. And I believe it's because of how viruses, as we all know now, really can long-term impact your health. And I know that it is so scary to look at these things and to think about it. I'm a mom now, you know, I'm not... I'm really not denigrating it, but if I could go back in time, if I could get in my time machine and ask my parents to do one thing, I would ask them to vaccinate me against MMR because it changed the course of my life. And if you're a parent and you're thinking about the measles outbreak and you're thinking about what you should do and you're not sure yet, this is just my story and uh, go with God. I wish you the very best on your choice. Anyway, not really my usual content, but it was on my mind today. Have a great night.